The concept of globalization resonates with interconnectedness and interindependence pivoted by diplomacy and international relations. The latter have served as a language of peace uniting nations in a global symphony of collaboration and understanding. Although Ghana has numerous bilateral relations with countries around the world, it is hardly surprising to find some Ghanaians uninformed about the full-fledged diplomatic services operated by the highest seat of the Roman Catholic Church here in Ghana. The Vatican, also referred to as the Holy See, is a landlocked area in Europe. The Vatican, though the smallest country in the world, is accredited as the headquarters of Roman Catholicism and the center of Christianity. The Vatican, also known as the Holy See, as I mentioned earlier, has managed to establish diplomatic relations with over 176 countries around the world. Their embassies are called nunciatures and the ambassadors nuncios. It is riveting to add that in addition to the diplomatic status and work of the nuncio, he also serves as a liaison between the Vatican and the Roman Catholic diocesan episcopate in his assigned region or nation. Joining us in an exclusive one-on-one -on -one to discuss the Ghana-Vatican bilateral diplomacy is His Excellency Henrik Jagodzinski, the Apostolic Nuncio to Ghana. He joins us as we delve deeper into to the Ghana Vatican bilateral diplomacy. Ghana and the Holy See have reasserted their commitment to collaborate more in the areas of education, health, um, youth development, and also the promotion of the gospel. So join me as we delve deeper into this diplomatic information. Grace Life TV, diplomatic information, and more. So welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Youth Time Show on Grace Life TV. I'm here um, today with His Excellency the Apostolic Nuncio to Ghana, um, um, His Excellency Henrik Jagodzinski. You're welcome, Your Excellency. Good morning. Good morning. It is indeed um, an honor to have you on the show today. I am happy to meet you too. Thank and you so much. Best greetings to all who are looking at us in television. Thank you so much. We are grateful. So, um, before we delve deeper into the diplomatic information, let's start from the scratch. If you could do it simply in one um, sentence, who is um, the Apostolic Nuncio to Ghana, His Excellency Henrik Jagodzinski? Now, the, the short sentence is he's a representative of Pope Francis mm -hmm. to the Catholic Church in, in Ghana mm -hmm. and to government of Ghana. This is the shortest definition. That is basically. Yes. But can you tell us um, some of um, the work of the Apostolic Nuncio to Ghana? The diplomatic roles you play here? Uh, short version or <laughs> The extended one. <laughs> so maybe in the beginning, like some small introduction that I would like to explain one thing. Mm -hmm that uh, sometime in media, especially in the journalist uh, world, uh, like abbreviation, the author use uh, like synonym Holy See mm -hmm. and uh, Vatican or Vatican City. Mm -hmm. It seems the same, but it's not the same. Okay. So Vatican City is true how you said it is, it is smallest country in the world only has 44 hectares uh, and this is real estate which has uh, sovereignty, uh, territory and uh, population smallest in the world. I am one of these <laughs> citizens. Yeah. But it's also interesting with citizenship that uh, only Holy Father has a citizenship uh, alive others like me uh, and my colleagues that citizens are the diplomats and also Swiss Guard as some official they have citizenship only during the uh, work when work stopped they uh, uh, lost automatically automatically the citizenship mm -hmm. and this state was created 
1929 in base of the so-called uh, Lateran Agreement between Holy See and the Kingdom of Italy. Yes, in the doctrine, this is uh, um, some discussion. If this is a continuation of the pontifical state, of the, some new things. But in the end, uh, the role of the smallest uh, country in the world is uh, guaranteed the independence of Holy Father and his mission. So that we can say that uh, this uh, uh, state uh, come in the history in one moment, but it's not necessary that uh, should be until the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, and now what is different between Holy See? And Holy See, is the central, using the today's uh, uh, language, is the central government of Catholic Church. Okay. It means Holy Father with Roman Curia. Okay. This is the Holy See. Okay. Uh, and this is the uh, two separate entities. Even the Holy Father is head one and other. But sometime, uh, uh, Catholic Church act like uh, Holy See and sometimes like Vatican City, for example. This is international organization like uh, World Union of Post. And here the member is uh, Vatican City, not Holy See. Or the uh, 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 World Atomic Agency, and also here the member is the Vatican City, not uh, the Holy See. Uh, and uh, this more the distinction distinction is uh, also necessary for some uh, also international agreements because they are the some international agreements which are made with the Vatican City, not with Holy See, or opposite with Holy See, not with uh, Vatican uh, City. Uh, and yes, this is the small introduction. And uh, my role uh, is also defined by uh, Code of Canon Law. This is the uh, uh, rules which define the rule of apostolic nuncia. It's interesting that in canon law we don't have named the nuncia, we have the name legate of uh, uh, Holy Father. Mm -hmm. It means his representative. And the principal uh, uh, role is to make strongest demand of unity uh, between uh, Holy Father mm -hmm. and local church and also with the uh, uh, government of the country where he is accredited. And we have some different uh, 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 figure of Pope's legates because there are some countries where Mm, this is no nuncio, is apostolic delegate. It's been representative of the Holy Father to uh, the local church. And uh, before stabilized uh, the diplomatic relation between Ghana and Holy See, uh, it was the representative which was called the apostolic delegate. He was delegate for uh, Nigeria and Ghana but with residence in uh, Nigeria. So that uh, officially we started the diplomatic relation in 1976, but before uh, existed the, uh, this uh, relation, but not in the level of the uh, ambassadors. And uh, in many countries where is the apostolic delegate, 
uh, he also has some diplomatic privilege and also is part for the discussion, but he doesn't have the uh, diplomatic status like the uh, uh, ambassador. Okay, thank you so much. So you uh, mentioned earlier that um, diplomatic relations between Ghana and the Vatican commenced in the year 1976. That yes. Is right. Yes. Now, one interesting thing um, that we would like to know is that during the presentation of um, your letter of introduction to the Ghana mm -hmm. Catholic Bishop Conference in the year 2020, you pledged to draw the church in Ghana um, and the Catholic community closer to the mission and the gospel of Christ. It has been three years. How has the journey been? And what policies did you put in place to achieve this? Uh, so I can say, using the, the words of the gospel, that I am coming not to make my own will, mm -hmm. but will of who sent me, it's mm -hmm. with the uh, Holy Father. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, this is uh, uh, every time a, a little difficult and dangerous to make the valuation of himself because you can be too much uh, uh, enthusiastic or too much uh, critics and it's difficult to really uh, make the, um, the balance. But I think that in these three years, uh, I visited almost, some, with some exception, all dioceses in Ghana. So I traveled uh, north, middle, east, west, south uh, of Ghana. And with pleasure, I accept the invitation for uh, celebration and uh, during the meetings uh, when I have with uh, faithful and pay pastors with bishop priest uh, I take the opportunity to share with them um, uh, some uh, uh, words uh, of uh, Holy Father just uh, yesterday I come back from Sunyani, uh, where I participate in the official opening of uh, uh, Bishop uh, Conference, where, of course, uh, I spoke about the documents recently published by uh, uh, Holy Father. This was about his apostolic exhortation, mm -hmm. la confiance. This is the, the trust. So, and uh, also what I noticed in Ghana, even me, in the meeting with no Catholic, no Christian, because I am the nuncio for all Ghanaians, not only for Catholics. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, I was very touched that everywhere I was very warm, uh, 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 welcomed, uh, and uh, they are very enthusiastic uh, about Pope Francis and uh, expressed to me his appreciation, especially for uh, what he's doing for the peace and co collaboration between uh, the nations. So, and uh, when I am visiting some dioceses, also, normally, I pay the courtesy visit to the traditional uh, leaders. Uh, also, I meet uh, the representative of other uh, confession. And also, it is very nice that uh, uh, in mention opening uh, of uh, Bishop Conference, they were also the representative of the Anglican community and the Muslim community, where they also uh, delivered some uh, address uh, to the gathered people. Okay, thank you so much. So I like the fact that um, during the beginning you said you are here to, um, you know, 
you know, continue the work of the Pope himself. Now he made a statement where he highlighted that the task of diplomacy is precisely to resolve conflict and thus to foster a climate of reciprocal cooperation and the trust um, of meeting common needs. So how can um, the apostolic nuncios, you know, concretely live out this mandate? Uh, uh, what, uh, of what the Pope said? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, these, uh, these words come, what you quoted, come from the uh, annual uh, address to the diplomatic corps mm -hmm. uh, dur in, during the meeting uh, with Holy Father in the January, that normally is around 11 uh, of January, yeah. when uh, he delivered his speech uh, presenting uh, the situation in the world and also uh, his view and uh, of course this is indication for all of us uh, like his representatives to uh, follow this line and this is also some kind of instruction that we receive for what we should uh, focusing uh, uh, in this, uh, this year <coughs> Uh, so, uh, during my mission in Ghana, I had the occasion to meet many people, also the other diplomats, uh, most in uh, some reception on the official uh, meetings. And uh, in this uh, occasion, I try also in certain manner uh, to transmit uh, uh, these values uh, about what Holy Father was speaking about it. Of course, I not start that you know this year in the meeting of uh, uh, with the diplomatic call, Holy mm -hmm. Father said that we should uh, implement uh, the peace. Mm -hmm. But uh, talking about certain topics, uh, I try to present uh, the the view and desire of uh, Holy Fathers. Mm -hmm. And also what I think is very important uh, that to uh, meet the, the people which uh, maybe don't have the occasion directly participate in, uh, uh, in uh, policy politic but to transmit them uh, also the view of uh, holy fathers because what i i believe that uh, what change the world are the ideas and the ideas i should start it from base from from the ground mm -hmm. that is great so um coming back to our bilateral relations with the Vatican. Would you term Ghana's bilateral relations with the Vatican a religious diplomacy or a combination of all? Uh, no, I, I think this is a combination of uh, of all because uh, how we know the Catholic community uh, is uh, is. 10% mm -hmm. uh, according to the recent census, 10.1% of, of the all uh, population. And uh, uh, like Catholic Church, in dialogue with the uh, modern world, uh, we try uh, to have relation with everybody and uh, how you know that not everybody uh, uh, have the uh, same values what we we have especially the religious values mm -hmm. but there are other values we we could find like common and uh, when we can collaborate 
with uh, representatives of other religions, and even with the people who which don't confess any religion, but uh, share with us the, the values like human development, the, the, the peace, the, the, the freedom, etc. Okay, so human development, peace, and all. So would you term all these assistive policies towards the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals? Uh, yes, uh, of, of course, because uh, like the human beings, uh, we are the like individuals in society. Uh, we are a very uh, complex uh, being, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, this maybe is, uh, could sound paradoxically, but uh, to have possibility to confess uh, some religion we need the, the peace. And even St. Paul in his letter exhorts the, the, the Christian at that time to pray for the leaders, the rulers, uh, that we could have the quiet life and could worship Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, quiet life, uh, it means uh, uh, peace, uh, and all of what is uh, necessary for life. It means also the uh, house, uh, food, uh, education, uh, what is necessary um, to, uh, to have a regular life in society. Thank you so much. Looks like all the messages about peace, as Pope Francis um, said in his letter in January. So what would you like us to know, the youth around the world? How would you explain the Ghana-Vatican bilateral diplomacy? What does it entail, in essence? Uh, you mean the relation between... Yes, Ghana and the Vatican. Uh, so that even the Catholic community is not majority confession, but majority uh, of the citizens uh, of Ghana are Christian. Mm -hmm. So this is one level which is common for us and for uh, majority. And uh, Ghana uh, in the in the world could be. Uh, example of the religious freedom that uh, this is place also for no Christian, uh, for other uh, religion, and all could live together in uh, collaboration and uh, in good uh, atmosphere. Uh, and uh, this, uh, I think. Uh, uh, is an example which could uh, serve for uh, other nations, not only in Africa, but also in the whole world. Because unfortunately, you see in many places in the world, there are a lot of armed conflicts and also uh, which have the, the religious uh, motivations. And uh, the first uh, need what uh, every human being needs is uh, uh, peace and uh, uh, the feeling that uh, uh, his life and his family is not in, in danger. So this is, this is basic for uh, uh, everything. And uh, 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 the situation what we have, the, the religious freedom in Ghana, I think, is also a result of the generation uh, of the people of goodwill from both sides or many sides, because not only Christian government, but also for the representative of other, other communities when they find the, the manner 
uh, to live together in harmony and in peace. Thank you so much for commending the religious um, tolerance of Ghanaians. We are super grateful. And we'll be signing off quickly, but we can't talk about um, bilateral relations and leave gastronomy out. You've been in Ghana for three years now. What's your favorite food lately? Uh, uh, my uh, favorite Ghanaian uh, dish. Favorite Ghanaian dish is the uh, seafood. The seafood. seafood? Yes. You enjoy and, the seafood? Yes. And right. also, uh, how you say, enjoy uh, the rice with jollof the, rice? Jollof rice. You know, yes. Ghana has the best jollof rice. Yes, in the I whole know, world. in the world. <laughs> in some <laughs> reception and discuss, I will not say with. <laughs> Which ambassador, when I said that is here, the <laughs> best. No, no, it's not true. In my country, it's the best. Right. We have the best. You know. <laughs> no, but I said, no, no, I prefer Ghana. <laughs> right. So before we sign off officially, this is where the youth of the world, um, everybody's watching you. What piece of advice do you have for the youth? So, uh, my first advice is that trust in Jesus Christ. Uh, and consider Jesus Christ like master and teacher. This is first. And second, uh, not follow the world fashion. Especially for the Ghanaian youth, you have so rich tradition and uh, very rich culture. You not need foreign importation. Of course, this is nice uh, to meet other people, other culture, some exchange, but not replace uh, your traditional values, Christian values, with other values. So, like a simple example, no? uh, about what is the basic marriage. Traditionally is union between men and women. And but from other side of the world come the other version and even about the the sex that we have to sex men and women and some other uh, tradition could no, this is some difference. Uh, and uh, also, you have the beautiful country uh, and uh, you can do the, the great thing. And I think studying your history, I saw so that in short time uh, you made a, like nation uh, a lot uh, of things. And I think this is also some uh, modern temptation in many countries to be selfish and this is not good because also gospel teach us to not be selfish uh, and uh, to be open not for only for your close uh, neighbors relatives but also uh, to love your homeland your country Thank you so much, Your Excellency. It is indeed an honor having you. Both welcome. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've been here with the Apostolic Nuncio to Ghana, His Excellency Henrik Jagodzinski, who also is the Ambassador of Vatican to Ghana, delving deeper into the Ghana Vatican bilateral relations. We heard from him um, his message of advice and all, which centered on peace, um, as the Pope said earlier in January in his disposition to the ambassadors and the Nuncios. This has been the Youth Time Show on Grace Life TV with me, your host, Vanessa Zeke. Until then, the show comes away another time. It's bye for now.